Communication on the prescribed burn is one of the most important things for safety, not only for maintaining your fire where it's supposed to be at, but also for the safety of everybody involved, all the people working on the fire crew on that. Having good communications and with that is comes a good radio and being able to operate a radio. So make sure before you start burning, everybody understands how to operate a radio, how to turn it off and on. They know what channel it's supposed to be on. Also, they understand how to talk into the radio, not to hold it too far away from their mouth, not to hold it too close. Also to understand that the best, best means of communication with the radio is clear text communication. That means just use normal language, normal talk on the radio. We don't use tin codes or anything like that, but just talk normally and describe the situation just as you would talking about it. Also, whenever you're getting ready with the radio to be able to use it, uh, make sure that you key the mic before you start talking and that you let go of the mic when you're done talking. That way people can hear the whole complete sentence you're trying to say. And also if you leave the button keyed down when you get done, nobody can reply back. You've made the channel busy by keeping it keyed down. So make sure you push it down before you talk, let go of it when you get done speaking with it. Uh, Radio should be placed along the fire line. You know, in a perfect world, on a perfect burn, everybody would have a radio. But a lot of times that's not the possibility because radios are expensive and trying to get enough for everybody is sometimes difficult. But what you should make sure that the fire boss has one, the crew leaders have one, all the vehicles have one that, that needs a radio and have them spread out. Don't bunch the radios up all in one spot along the fire line. Make sure they're spread out from where you started at to where you're lighting to make sure that communication can be made throughout the whole burn area all along that fire line. Also with radios, that when you're utilizing radios, make sure you get good quality radios that'll be able to reach out. A lot of times the lower cost radios are also lower quality radios. They, they may claim they have a range of several miles when in fact they don't have that far of a range. Also you need to think into what kind of terrain, what kind of vegetation that you're gonna be utilizing or burning in. So if you're burning in a forested setting, radios, the distance a radio can talk becomes less because the trees, again, intercept radio waves, shorten that distances down. If you're burning in areas that are have a lot of hills and valleys and stuff, when you get down the bottom of the valleys, a lot of times you can't hear very well, but up on top, you can get a lot of range from that. So think about the quality of the radios, the type of radios that you're gonna get, uh, and make sure that they all fit in, fit into budget, but they also are the type of radios that can be, that are useful on the fire line. Because getting there with a radio that just will not reach out is, you might as well not have a radio there at all. Heath, you got a copy? Yeah, go ahead. Securing radios yeah, is another thing to make sure you keep up with them. A lot of times you clip them on a belt, clip them on a pocket, you're going to lose them. So make sure that you've got either deep pockets that hold radios for what you're going to do. They also make, uh, harnesses to, to hold the radios and that way they carry them on your chest they're easy to use communicate you just lean down and talk you don't have to take them out you can also hear real well also another good thing about having harnesses if not everybody has a radio people can look up and see on the chest somebody has one and they can get to them and have them relay a message as needed